Hi everybody! Thank you for clicking on this video. Welcome back to my channel where I review, critique, and summarize scary children's books. Today I will be your guide to Under the Bed Fred. This is a first fiction children's chapter book written by Linda Bailey and illustrated by Colin Jack. In this video I'm going to summarize the book for you. I'm going to talk about the story content and give that a little bit of a review. And finally, as always, I'm going to talk about any horror elements at play here. But first I really quickly wanted to say a really big thank you to every everyone for 100 subscribers. Thank you guys for being here and listening to me talk about children's books for 10 minutes a week. This has been so fun to do so far and I get to talk about the books that I love and meeting all of you has been great so thank you. Okay so let's just dive right into this week's book. Under the Bed Fred is about a little boy named Leo who has a monster living under his bed that he is very afraid of. And at nighttime, when he needs to go to the bathroom, he always stays in bed and just waits until morning because he's afraid that the monster will grab his ankles. Except one night, Leo can't hold it any longer, so he calls out to the monster, Hey you, just stay where you are basically, don't come out, I'm going to the bathroom. And to Leo's surprise, the monster listens to him and they strike up a little bit of a conversation. From here, Leo and the monster, who he names Fred, they become a bit of an odd couple and together they have a few adventures that involve scaring away bullies and going to Leo's show and tell at his school and things like that. So this book was published last year in 2017 and it's the first in a chapter book series written by Linda Bailey and illustrated by Colin Jack. Some people like to think of this kind of book as a kind of first fiction so this is a really easy sort of gateway into reading novels and longer chapter books for kids that are starting to read on their own. It's not quite an easy reader and not quite a longer chapter book either so it exists sort of in the middle for those kids that are transitioning into longer books now. So basically it is a really short book but it's it does have a number of chapters and chapter headings to sort of get kids used to reading books with chapters. The vocabulary in the book is very appropriate for this age range. There are words that kids will recognize and words that kids will learn. But nothing too intimidating for kids that are just moving into reading longer books. So first I'm going to talk a little bit about the story here. I think that the actual storytelling here is really effective. The theme of this book is a pretty common theme if you read a lot of books for kids this age or kids that are even younger. This is a book about nighttime fear and making friends with something that was formerly seen as scary. It's very Nightmare in My Closet by Mercer Mayer kind of thing where the kid actually stands up or outsmarts the monster in some way and they kind of become friends or they're in some kind of partnership. For example Fred in this book is always saying I'm sorry I have to scare you it's my job. So even though Fred does do some scary things everybody knows that it really is just because that is the nature of their relationship the monster and the boy that the monster scares. It's really funny and really cute and Fred is really not all that scary at all but he does do a few things that are just like in the name of scaring Leo so for example he'll make a lot of scary noises or he'll morph into some scary animals that kind of thing. That's something kind of unique about this book that I really like. It's not really that Leo and Fred are super good friends it's just that they are in this relationship that seems to work out for both of them. Fred lives under Leo's bed and scares him and Leo kind of uses Fred to his advantage in a number of everyday ways. Fred scares away a bully that is destroying Leo's toys for example and Fred comes to Leo's show and tell in his class when he doesn't really have anything else to bring. So it's really really cute you get the sense that they lean on each other for certain things but they're not exactly friends but they do care about each other. It's a really like fun like odd couple kind of relationship. So I think that's really cool the book presents a little bit more of a complex relationship between the child and the monster more complex at least than just being fast friends and again this is a first book in in a series so it'll be really interesting as the series goes on to see Fred and Leo's relationship kind of change and grow. Maybe they will become really good friends and like take care of each other. <laughs> so cute. Linda Bailey's writing is really really good. It's punchy, it's fast paced, it's really everything that you want from an early chapter book like this. And something that I really like is it's just so funny. The book does have some laugh out loud moments. That humor and that lightheartedness are just wonderful. And Colin Jack's illustrations are very colorful, they're very lively, and they really tell a story in the way that makes sense with everything that's going on in the text. 
He actually uses a lot of vignettes, which I really like. They kind of break up the text and make the page look a little less intimidating for a kid that is having to read like a wall of text, right? And a lot of the vignettes are just very close up on Leo's face. So you can see exactly how Leo is feeling, whether it be fearful or curious or happy or something like that. So I'll give you guys a little bit of an example. So here we have a couple of pages that are pretty text heavy for a book like this, but the text is broken up with these little vignettes of Leo's face. So we can see him here being pretty fearful and like with his covers up over his face, but here he's looking pretty curious. So this really helps to show exactly what Leo is feeling and put a real focus on the main character. But uh, we also have this sort of dual purpose of breaking up this text and making the page look a whole lot less intimidating. The illustrations show a lot of action too, which I really like. So it seems like Leo is always on the move, or if he's not, then he's sort of sitting there, but he seems to be a very active character as well. The same with Fred. Fred is always sort of just on the cusp of doing something. It gives the book a sense of liveliness and a spirit that is just really fun to read. Jack also uses a few elements here and there of comics, so we do get some speech bubbles and things like that, which I think is really cool. I love seeing elements of comic books and that kind of visual communication being used in books for young kids like this. As far as horror elements go, besides the story content and the narrative being about a monster and a kid and the monster having a job to scare the kid, there isn't a ton of scares here. But the content itself is situated in kind of a horror space, so we do have this story about a kid and a monster and the monster's job is to scare the kid, etc. And there are a few fun little intertextual references to other horror things. And a lot of this has to do with the background in the illustrations, especially in Leo's room. He has a lot of posters up and they look like sort of hand-drawn posters by Leo of monsters and sort of horror things. For example, so on this page we can see that behind Leo on the wall he has a couple posters and one of them is kind of a take on Jaws called Chompers, which is really cool. Throughout the book you can see other posters of his that have aliens and other monsters on them. He also has a number of monster related toys, one especially looks like Godzilla. And he has a monster alarm clock as well, so you can see that Leo kind of locates himself within this storytelling that in involves gentle scares and creepy ideas like monsters and aliens and things like that. And that's part of the reason that I think this book is actually just kind of perfect for what it is. I was thinking about it and I actually don't know of any ways that I would think to improve this book. It really rides the line for kids that are interested in things like monster stories, but they have maybe experienced nighttime fear. It's all here. It's all perfectly sort of wrapped up in this little package, this really adorable, funny, wonderful story. If you have a kid or know a kid or have a kid in your life that is interested in these kinds of things and is just starting to read early chapter books, I honestly can't recommend this book enough. It's a situation that actually really got me hooked as a reader. I don't have kids or anything, but I am totally in the market for this series. <laughs> All right guys, so that is it for my review today. Thank you again so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like and let me know down in the comments below what your favorite chapter book as a kid was. Did you read a lot of first fiction like this when you were a kid? I know when I was a kid, I read a ton of Junie B. Jones. I just remember loving the Junie B. Jones books. I really do give a lot of credit to quality first fiction like this for turning me into the reader that I am today. And guys, if you want to see more of me on here, go ahead and click subscribe. I'll be here doing Scary Kids Books reviews for the foreseeable future. And you can follow me on various other social media. The links are in the description below. Alright guys, thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you again next week.